Rumex is um, well, Soro. You know, a lot of a lot of common names mean different plants. And so what Ramu didn't have time to talk about is that as we interviewed the different ethnic groups, we couldn't just talk about names of plants because everybody uses this many plants with the, with the same name. We actually had a, a pictures so that we identified what pictures, what crops, and then finally we figured out what they were looking at. So even when we're talking about sorrel and other types of spinach, and particularly the Chinese types of brassicas, it gets a little bit confusing. And what we find is commercial seed companies find it extremely confusing, and sometimes they just take out a dictionary and find out the name of what a plant should be, and then label the seed pack with that, and then you open it up as a commercial grower. And it's, you're lucky if it's the right genus, sometimes it's the, often the wrong species. And this we've been doing for over two decades, so we have good data on that. But sorrel looks easy. It's easy to grow. This is a plant before the first harvest, harvesting edge, end of the season. And when is the best time to harvest? That seems so easy, doesn't it? To pick it up, right? But you're working on a new crop, which none of the ethnic groups necessarily agree when is the best time to harvest. And you talk to a bunch of us as researchers, and some of us have never seen the crops before, as the one best to harvest. But that itself becomes challenging. Of course, that's a key issue. We want to be able to harvest the crops in the way that the targeted ethnic consumers that now use it are used to it. When you introduce a crop like that to a different audience, then you can really harvest at any time. As long as you're introducing it commercially, you redefine what the harvesting time is. So that these are crops that are usually multiple, can go into multiple harvesting. Okay? What we found is in the seed source, we had very poor germination, but excellent yields. Okay, this was not atypical. Most of the ethnic greens and crops and the specialty crops don't have the type of plant breeding efforts and the seed germination quality control standards that you give on more traditional vegetables than we're used to. And so when you get into this really weird exotic stuff, it's different. And every time you buy seed from the same company, it could be coming from a different seed source and the germination often is not that high. So you have to be very careful about poor germination, test the viability, demand excellent, at least acceptable germination from the seed companies. And make them accountable for the quality of the seed that they sell you. In this study, we harvested sorrel three times. It had great regrowth. And again, the question is, how low do you cut it? How do you package it? How do you bundle it? And how does it regrow? Of course, to make it profitable, you don't want to, you know, American growers or any growers around the world, I do a lot of this in other countries, you can do a crop that can be multiple harvested and still only harvest it one time because it's ease. You plant something every seven to 10 days, right? You harvest it when it's young, you bundle it, you move on. This way you have potentially less insect disease, weed control issues. But in this time, we, in this study, as we're trying to learn about the crops, we wanted to just plant it once in the season and then go into multiple harvests. And in this crop, uh, we harvested three, three times, always excellent regrowth. We did have some insect damage from Japanese beetles. Okay, Tentative observations that look promising, but we have to make sure we monitor the insects before it gets commercialized. What we try to do with all these crops, and maybe it would be an exaggeration to say we did it with all the crops, we try to package it, bundle it, put it in a container like this, and then bring it to the typical bodega or the type of supermarket or small family business in our local areas that would then sell it to say, OK, this is what we think we have. Is this what you're used to? And then if it is what you're used to, is it the right color? Is it the right taste? Is it bundled right? And then do you like it? And we did that in the first couple of years, and it looked good. And the tentative response was, A, we were happy we were the right plant, usually. Okay. Secondly, it looked really good. And third, the consumers in the stores were talking to the shop owner wanted to buy it. That was always a good market. You know, I'm not that I'm not that strong as a marketer. I'm more dealing with just the plants and biology. Okay, so I'm always learning from our marketing team and the experts. But if I'm in a store and we're showing a, a store owner what it looks like, and the consumers that are you know everybody's kind of nosy looking around, wanting to buy it, wanting to buy it from us more than the store owner because fig they figure they could get it even cheaper. That's a good sign. And why I say this is a lesson, when I used to be at Purdue for 17 years, I always tell the story, we were introducing Perilla. And who knew what Perilla was back then, right? But it was a good Korean green. We were really confident. We'd get the seeds from the typical seed companies, no names needed. And we'd grow the Perilla, we'd, we'd grow it, we'd put it out on Butch Danstra's farm outside Chicago. And groups of Koreans would come to the farm, and we were really excited. Finally, we had real Perilla. And they'd walk right by our Perilla. And they were going to other crops, and we questioned them, and we said, do, do you know what this plant is? And they said, no. They said, it's perlite. They said, it's not our perlite. Okay? So it was, there's much more in a name. It has to be really the phenotype. It has to be what they're used to in order to make it resonant. That is, if we truly want to make it market-driven. There's nothing more frustrating than growing a crop that looks good, yields good, good quality, and then you get to eat it all. 
There's nobody's buying it. Okay? And we all have had that experience, right? And you know Murphy's Law? You never have time to do it once, but you always find time to do it twice. Plus, we researchers, we usually take three or four times because it's slow, but trainable. This is what some of the plants look like over the course of this study during germination, during growing. We, we have, by the way, theoretically, a photographic kit with Pete as one of our lead photographers trying to look at what the crops look like at the seedling stage. Because, you know, a lot, a lot of these are weeds. And some of these we know, some of these we don't know. But as you're putting them in your field or you're putting them in your greenhouse, you want to make sure you're thinning out the correct plant not thinning out the crop you're usually getting rid of. Okay? And one of the biggest weeds in our fields, by the way, in all the sites, were the other weeds of the other species that were growing in a replicated block. So it's kind of, we have some great pictures of one plant um, that we're trying to grow, like personally being surrounded by all the other weeds we're trying to get rid of. And we're growing in another plot. Okay, I'll show you some data. I'll go through these slides very quickly. Okay, but you could look at a, really, thank you, Sren, for doing a lot of the analysis of it. We have it color-coded, so it's easy, because, you know, we're, 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 we're very tactile oriented. Um, orange is New Jersey, blue is Massachusetts, and yellow, when you've sent us, um, you'll see yellow down for Florida. And really, the, the higher the histogram, the higher the units. So with, with Indian sorrel, um, New Jersey had a very high plant height in one year, about the same plant height the other year. You can look at the different bars, but in general, the st statistics will show you that there's no real difference, but it, grow great, it grew great in all the locations. In 2001 and 2002, we, we categorized them, but for height, width, uniformity, the kind of way a plant stand would be, would, has the vigor, has the uniformity, is it going to be competitive against other weeds and other things in the fields, and they look, they look great. They look like there really wasn't that much to do except monitor for the insects. We did fresh and dry weight. Of course, fresh weight is it's all for the fresh weight, but we wanted to normalize the dry weight too to do other types of analysis on the plants as well. Um, the results show that it's not significant, meaning they all grow, it all grows, it all grows good in each of the states. So that's what we want. The whole idea of this whole concept is if you start to grow something in Florida, then you can move it up to New Jersey and up to Massachusetts, we can then occupy a window of entering into supermarkets on as, as many months over the course of a, of a year as possible, rather than only in one state or one region. Of course, Florida has a little bit of advantage of a longer window, but we're competitive and we don't want them to occupy our windows as well. But we feel that it could be good seasonal so that as we get into the larger supermarkets, we could have a better confidence that rather than shipping it in from the Caribbean and other countries, we could do it here along the eastern standards on board 